Hi again. Um, for this video, we're going to look at adding interactivity to the sketches that you make. Um, in this video, I'm using the audio to change a parameter of the sketch, which in this case um, is the color. But um, you could also use the mouse or write sort of custom functions or use a MIDI controller to control other aspects of what you see on the screen. So here we'll get started and show the code. Um, so this is the code that's that's generating what uh, this kind of color color sound thing. And yeah, you can see. The more I clap, the more the color the colors change. Um, and so. In order to explain how interactivity works, I'm going to start kind of with a simpler example to start out. So I'm going to clear the screen and I'll show myself in the little corner. Um, so uh, let's say we start with just a shape. Um, and again, remember the shapes have, have these different parameters. We can have um, the first parameter, which is the number of sides in the shape. The second, which is the radius. So when it's a small uh, radius, it's smaller. When it's a big radius, it's bigger, etc. Um, and uh, what we could do is instead of having to manually change this number, one thing we can do, sort of a shorthand for what I just did, like right now I'm retyping in and I want to change this number. If I want it to automatically switch between um, uh, a certain set of numbers, what I could do is um, write those numbers inside this little square brackets. So if I do that, now it's switching between um, these two numbers and I could add um, another one there. So uh, what I might want to do is, oh, I like this, and it's it changes about once a second, but it might be I want to make it go faster, so I could um, add this command fast. And so this command fast, it only works outside of these brackets. Um, and so it only, this fast is only going to affect um, the numbers that are in the brackets and how fast we're switching between values. So. If I want to make it go twice as fast, I could go there. So now it's twice as fast. Um, or four times as fast. There we go, faster, even faster. Um, we can make it go slower. I guess it's a lot slower. Um, and there's another function, smooth, to be able to smoothly change between these different parameters. And so um, anything in Hydra that's a number can also be um, a parameter that changes. And um, these functions, fast and smooth, um, they only come after a series of of numbers in brackets. And the series of numbers in brackets are numbers that we're changing between. So I'm gonna make it faster again, and then we have this sort of thing. Um, and so we could sort of add a few different things like this together. So maybe I wanna repeat this. Um, and then we could add another layer on top. So I'm going to say diff with a different shape. Let's do a triangle this time. So here I just added a triangle. Um, and let's say with that shape, I can um, have um, different numbers for its radius as well. So I'll just go between uh, 0, 0 0.9, and 1. 
And so I, I just ran this code and it says this, missing parentheses after argument list. And so sometimes I think when, you know, you're adding lots of code, um, it can be easy to miss um, how many parentheses exactly should be there. So it's telling me I'm missing a parentheses somewhere. So I'm going to add a parentheses in. Um, Oh, it looks like my triangle went away, but that's probably because I put a zero radius. There's a triangle. So maybe let's go to one. Um, oh, and I put it very slow. And I'm going to do a smoothing to this as well. Um, and again, if you want the computer to reorganize your code for you, which may or may not be helpful, but you can do Control Shift F, and then it kind of reformats everything. Um, so here we can start to add, add animations. Um, and I could say maybe, um, I don't know, maybe I want my face inside of uh, one of these squares. So um, maybe I will um, say, Let's say multiply by, oops. So first I should initialize the camera in order to uh, show the camera here. So I'm gonna do init cam to start the camera. And then I'm gonna do um, multiply this by the camera. So now we can see my face in here and um, Right now, it's kind of changing the box that's around my face. And then what I could also do here, actually, I'm going to get rid of the triangle just for a li little so we just see this. Um, um, so what we're doing here, we're making a shape. Uh, it's a square. It has four sides. And then um, we're changing the radius over time, um, and we're using this sequence of um, numbers in order to have a sequence of values um, in time. And so this can kind of help create rhythms or patterns, uh, visual rhythms of some sort. So um, what I could also do is um, maybe add some more um, transformations to uh, the camera image. So here I could say, I could make my face get bigger and smaller. So um, just to show you here, I'm, what I'm doing is I am taking the source S0 and I'm going to scale it. So it should make my face get twice as big when I press that. Um, so I could also, you know, have different values for this. So like, And so here I'm um, my face is scaling differently. Um, maybe if I had put a different value for how fast the initial um, shape is getting bigger and smaller, it'll change um, how much how much it's changing. Um, what if we go from two to negative two? It seems to be doing this like upside down thing. That's kind of cool. Um, and maybe I want to make it a little slower. So let's. And here. So, so this is the way of adding simple animations. We haven't gotten to interactivity yet, but we'll, we'll get there next. Um, so let's say um, instead of having this, um, these certain, these arrays, a series of numbers in brackets, it's called an array um, in a lot of different programming things, but it doesn't matter what it's called. But um, uh, instead of using these arrays, we could use um, a, uh, a function to change the numbers. And so again, any number in Hydra can be 
represented by a function or an array. And so what that means is any number can be something that's changing over time. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this scaling again. So we'll have a simple sketch again. Um, and so we'll go back to this and go back to this. Let's see. Okay. So now we're um, back to our straightforward sketch with not too much moving. Um, but let's say, what if we want the size of these boxes to be controlled by the mouse? And so what I can add is, is basically my own function. Um, functions are also, these things we've been using in Hydra, these are also called functions. Um, and they're basically little pieces of logic that can be reused in different ways and put together in different ways. Um, and so um, I want to make my own function that will make the size of this shape change with the mass. And so what, what I can do here is um, this is the notation for writing a function. So I need to do this parentheses arrow. And then what I can do is say mouse x. And so what will happen now is um, it should be that this square changes with mouse x. So what you'll see is I move the mouse off the screen, it disappears. I move the mouse back on the screen, it shows up again. And that's because um, the mouse is, is showing pixel values, basically. So the mouse is going from zero when it's over here to like a thousand when it's over here. And really, um, in order to see a change in size, I need to be going from zero to one. So what I could do is actually divide this by a thousand. So um, here, what I'm doing is um, now I can control the size of um, the square with the mouse. And we could use mouse Y to control, for example, this scale. And so again, I can't just type in mouse Y here. I have to use this notation with the um, um, parentheses and then the equals and the arrow because um, that's how the computer knows that that's going to be updating each time. And it kind of calls this piece of logic or function to calculate what the value should be the next time. Um, so here, let's say I want to add mouse y. Um, and so, so again, it's probably, you know, really big. So maybe I'll divide it by 200 or something. Maybe, um, hmm, that's interesting. Um, maybe we'll divide it by something a little less and see what happens. Oh, the repeat. Let's see if we take out this repeat actually. So now we're scaling. Um, I think actually the mouse Y, it gets, it's a little finicky. Mouse X can be more stable, but, um, so now we've created this, the response to the mouse. Um, and so we can use the same method to make something that, uh, responds to sound. Um, and so, um, there's a way in Hydra to get the microphone signal and use that sort of as a parameter, similar to the way that we're using the mouse as a parameter. You might have noticed when you first loaded the page, it asked to use your microphone. And so if you didn't allow the microphone initially, you might want to go back and um, reload the page and make sure you allow a microphone. Um, so, um, uh, 
I will show everything having to do with audio is in an object called A. And so in order to show um, the microphone input, we could do A.show. And so what happens here is um, that we can see these, uh, these um, bars going up and down based on on whether there's sound or not. So if I'm quiet, we'll see nothing. And then if I clap, uh, we see the bars move up and down. And so the left-hand side is lower frequencies and the right-hand side are higher frequencies of sound. And so this way we can um, make what we're making um, correspond to different frequencies of sound. And so sometimes, I use Hydra for making live visuals and accompanying other musicians. And um, when I do that, then, um, you know, I use different frequencies of sound for different um, aspects. Um, so let's, let's make the size of this square, this outer square, um, correspond to the um, the sound. And so uh, the syntax for doing that or the words for doing that are a dot FFT zero. And so um, zero means it's going to be this first bar here. And so I'm going to run it. And so now um, we can see that the square is getting bigger and smaller based on how much I'm talking. Um, Um, anyways, now we have an audio reactive thing. And again, this same um, way of making things react to sound can be applied to any of the functions we've seen so far, um, and any of the sketches we've seen so far where there's a number. So you can replace a number with a function. Um, and this, uh, the audio value always goes between zero and one. So, um, you know, if I wanted to make it bigger, I could multiply this by two. Um, and so now um, it gets really big when I'm talking. And again, the inside is still corresponding to my mouse. I'm going to actually make it the mouse X. Um, ooh. Um, so this is the basics of using interactivity. Um, I want to show one other thing with sound. So um, you might want to sort of control how the visuals or how sensitive the visuals are to the sound. And so um, there's another property of, uh, of, um, of a dot show um, of, of the audio object that is called um, smooth. And so what you can do is say set smooth. And um, what this does is it kind of averages out the values over time. So if you wanted what you're making to be really, really sensitive to the audio signal, you put set smooth zero. And so it's gonna take the exact value of the microphone at any time. So here, uh, it's really sensitive when I put set smooth zero. Um, when I put set smooth one, it's actually going to stop reacting completely because what it's doing is it's averaging the current value of the audio with the past value of the audio. And this number is how much to weight the past value with the current value. Um, and so if I put a one here, it's going to stop reacting. But let's say if I put 0 0.9 now, it's reacting, but it's a lot less jumpy than before. And so based on the microphone you're using, the type of audio you're listening to, um, you might have different, very different values for, for how much you want it to smooth. Um, there's some other functions that I won't go into right now, but um, basically uh, the I just realized you can't see these bars very well. I'm going to move this a little bit. 
So, um, the, basically, um, you'll see that there's two thin blue lines over the, uh, audio bars. And, uh, one thing you could do is change where those blue lines are and what that does is change kind of the minimum sound and the maximum sound uh, that you'll detect so let's say you have a lot of background noise and you don't want the visuals to react to all the background noise what you can do is say a dot set cut off and let's say see if i say like six so um there you'll see that the, the blue lines moved up a tiny bit. They're probably hard to see it in the video, but um, if you try it, you'll see this. The blue lines moved up um, a little bit. And so now um, there's a higher threshold before my visuals start reacting. And this will affect any way you're using the um, audio. And again, if you kind of want to go more into depth, um, I recommend um, the documentation and other resources um, um, here in the uh, it, in the kind of help window. So um, there's a few other things I would definitely recommend. There's um, the gallery that we were just looking at that's on uh, Twitter. There's a collaborative editor for Hydra called Pixel Jam where you can um, open and end up collaborating on a sketch with anyone in the world. Um, you don't need a login or anything like that. It's just kind of an open canvas, um, but only there's no chat or anything. You can only add code. Hydra book is a great in introduction to Hydra um, and there's a lot more tutorials and examples and there's also a forum and a Facebook group and I really recommend that if you've enjoyed this series of videos um, you can join either the forum or the Facebook group and ask questions everyone's very friendly to help out um, and so uh, I just wanted to mention those things because I know when you're learning something new, it can be helpful to ask questions and no question is too new.